How's it, everyone? And welcome to Season 2 of Game of Thrones. Of course, this is part of my Game of Thrones weekly, uh, to Season 6 is Sunday. Uh, of course, today is Season 2. So let's not jump into an intro, let's just jump right into the video. Um, as you can tell right here, this is the... D well, I don't know if you guys can't really tell. Well, now you can, because right there is the DVD version of it. Unfortunately, for this season and Season 4, I only have the DVD copies, because I was not able to get the Blu-ray ones. So I have the DVD ones, which are fine, because they actually have these limited editions... Uh, Steelbook uh, for seasons one and two, and eventually three, four, and five are going to come out as well. Uh, so I want to get those, uh, which are Blu-rays as well. So I'm just going to, you know, when I get the the, blue, uh, the Steelbooks, they'll just be my Blu-rays for seasons uh, two and four. So that's why I have the DVD one here. I just, you know, wasn't available in Blu-ray when I was able to get this, so that's why I have the DVD instead. But yeah, here's the cover. A uh, nice picture right here, the, like, you know, the, uh, the crown, of course, the king's crown. Uh, very, very nice, like, material to feel it. A pretty plain cover besides the uh, the crown, uh, right there. Game of Thrones, the complete second season. Uh, there's a the back, uh, other side, same as always. Uh, take it off because slip cover. Oh, sorry about that. Um, here is the um hard copy of it. Uh, here is right there all of the family sigils right there, which is nice. There's a spine. There is the uh the, you know the DVDs and whatnot. Again, once again, there's the Iron Throne, and you take it out. If it'll slide out. You got some really nice artwork as well on there. Uh, of course, right there, there's Tyrion Lannister on the front side. On the back, you got Jon Snow. You open it up. Uh, you have Rob Stark, Jaime Lannister. And you open it up, you have Cersei Lannister and Daenerys Targaryen. And here are the disc. Oh, disc 1 right there. Disc 2. Disc 3. Disc 4. And disc five. And of course, here's the insert, uh, which is the complete episode guide. And they're the claimants to the throne. Of course, this is the uh, the well. Besides Daenerys, you have four of the five uh, kings that took place in the the War of Five Kings. But Daenerys is trying to the throne as well, so they had to include her in it. But yeah, those are the houses uh, battling each other pretty much. Besides Daenerys, uh, you open it up. Uh, there is the, the episode guides right there. So I have episodes one and two. And then you open it up. There is the, um, once again, the map of Westeros. So that's good. Uh, doesn't have the family tree on this season like they did last season, but oh well. What are you going to do about it? But yeah, that's the artwork and everything for the, the DVD set. Real nice artwork. Tyrion right there. Let's put the case right there. And let's put that right there. And let's get the focus. And there we go. But yeah, season two of Game of Thrones uh, definitely had a lot in this season. You had a lot of introductions to a lot of characters. You had a lot of storylines progressing. Uh, you pretty much had the series, you know, kicking off right here. Because like I said in my season one review, season one was pretty much uh, what set up the entire series. And you definitely saw that here in this season where everyone was just going full force. And just, you know, you saw all the Recapush, uh, recapush. Oh my God, I can't say right now. Re, ah, Jesus, hold on. Repercussions. There we go. Sorry about that. I used to have uh, speech problems when I was in uh, elementary school with uh, certain words, and every now and then it'll appear again like that. What just happened right now? So I apologize for that. But yeah, the repercussions are pretty much of the events of ending of season one. We're playing out in the season as well. So he's got a lot of progressions, a lot going on. And I thought season two was just a fantastic season for the most part. Uh, for season two, you know, you saw, you saw the rise of Rob Stark a lot in this season. Uh, season. You pretty much saw him rise from, you know, being Ned Stark's son and heir to pretty much, you know, rising to the occasion and trying to avenge his father, uh, really becoming dominant, becoming king in the north. So uh, you saw the, the rise of Rob Stark, which is absolutely awesome because Rob Stark was one of my favorite characters on the show. So I really liked enjoying seeing him rise up to where he was compared to season one. Uh, Tyrion became the Hand of the King for the moment, or for, for the time being, you know, with uh, Joffrey now being the King. He became the Hand, hand of the King uh, temporarily. Uh, temporarily. Uh, so it, you saw the introduction to Stannis Baratheon, you know, you heard about him a lot in Season 1, but we finally were introduced to his character in this season as well as, uh, you know, Melisandre and Davos and, you know, pretty much anyone who serves him. So you introduce all of them and, you know, all the, the Fire King uh, or the Lord of Light um, mythology stuff and everything. So you got to learn, you got to uh, introduce introduced to all of that um you know the night's watch of course invaded uh crafters keep they were going there to pretty much you know see what's going on uh daenerys you saw her pretty much rising to the occasion as well you know after the death of called drogo um she really started coming on her own and becoming you know the khaleesi name 
and you really, you know, she just started leading her people, and, you know, even though they were not doing so well, she's trying to, you know, help them out and try to bring them to a better place, so you saw the rise of Daenerys as well in this season. Um, Theon, you know, was sent to the, back to the Iron Islands, where, he, you know, he that's where his home is, uh, by Rob Stark to pretty much try and align himself with uh, the Greyjoy family, with the Starks, trying to align them. However, uh, Balon Greyjoy, who is uh, Theon's father, was the fifth king in the in the, the War of Five Kings. Therefore, you know, he did not want to align himself to Rob Stark. He wanted to pretty much be king, you know, on the Iron Throne himself, uh, and pretty much convince Theon to, you know, say, hey, screw Rob Stark, join the family back. And that's what happens. You know, Theon goes to Ireland and pretty much betrays Rob Stark when his job was to align the Greyjoys with the Stark. So he saw the betrayal of Rob Stark by um, by Theon. Uh, you, of course, you had you know Tyrion and Bronn. Uh, you know their bond grew a lot stronger in this season as well. Uh, John, you know, uh, John Snow discovering you know the secret that Craster has been doing with his uh, his born sons because Craster uh, Craster only has daughters who are his wives, which is fucking disgusting. But his born sons, he sacrifices them to the White Walkers. Um, so John discovered about that secret. Uh, Catelyn Stark, on behalf, uh, pretty much of Rob, you know, she rode Rentley Baratheon's camp, who had a large army, uh, pretty much trying to align uh, him with Rob Stark as well, and trying to, you know, make a peace between him and Stannis, because him and Stannis are brothers, but, you know, even though Stannis is the rightful heir, you know, Rentley believes he should be king over Stannis, so they're trying to, you know, hash out and try to come to an agreement between the two of them, but it's just not going to work because they're both on the Iron Throne, so it's going to end up leading the battle. Um, Arya Stark was eventually taken as a prisoner uh, because, you know, she was under wing of uh, the recru uh, recruits for the Night's Watch, but they were attacked, and she was taken prisoner in that during that attack. Um, uh, Daenerys enters Karth, which was a big deal in the season, well, her going to Karth, and you know, her dragons being kidnapped and the whole thing around in Karth, so that's a big deal of the season. Uh, Jekka Hagar, um, who Arya saved, I believe, either beginning of the season, or the end of the season, I know it was beginning of the season, uh, she saved him, and he ended up becoming, a, he becomes a huge focal point in the series as well. So she gives him three names, She kill, he kills the three names, which was good. Renly Baratheon ends up getting murdered by the, uh, the shadow of Stannis Baratheon. You know, Stannis and Melisandre have a pretty much a demon baby-like. Uh, which, you know, ends up going and killing Rentley. So the war between this, the, the Baratheon brothers never happened because before, before the war started, you know, pretty much Stannis, you know, assassinated um, Rentley through a demon baby, pretty much. A shadow baby, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so Rentley's murdered, which pretty much the rest of uh, Rentley's army goes to Stannis considering they have no one to fight for at that point. Uh, Bran of Tarth, uh, Bran of Tarth, sorry, uh, is introduced as well. You know, her, her uh, aligning herself, she was, you know, uh, Renly's pretty much guard, but when Renly died, she pretty much aligned herself with uh, Catelyn Stark and pretty much became uh, the guard for Catelyn for the time being. Uh, Theon, you know, on behalf of his, bro of his father, takes over Winterfell, who was being watched over pretty much by Bran and Rickon Stark, the only Starks there. So, um, you know, Theon took it over and uh, proclaimed to murder the boys. Uh, so Theon is now taking over Winterfell. Um, you know, Sansa Stark, you know, you, she saw the, you saw the relationship between her and Joffrey not grow, but, you know, you just saw pretty much Joffrey torment her and pretty much throwing her around, uh, almost pretty much killed her because of, uh, you know, Rob Stark is, you know, heading to King's Landing, trying to take over, um, not take over, but trying to fight the Lannisters and, you know, to punish her for her brother's crimes, you know, he's pretty much just whipping her around and, you know, pretty much, you know, doing horrible things to her, um, which, you know, pretty much Tyrion was there to save the day for her for most, most of the time. Uh, you had Rob Stark uh, meet Talisa, uh, who ends up becoming a big part of his life as well. Um, Jon Snow, you know, when they're coming back, uh, going back from Craster's Keep to uh, to the Castle Black, they actually he actually gets um, uh, gets lost. He doesn't get lost, but he gets pulled away because they capture a wildling being uh, being named Ingrate. He becomes a, another big character in the series. Uh, he ends up, you know, she ends up running off, and you know, he ends up getting her. And since they're, you know, he's been. Uh, lost from the Night's Watch, he pretty much has to watch over her and try to find his way back to the rest of the crew. Uh, you know, Daenerys, her, her dragons are stolen, you know, which uh, she, you know, was very um, scared about. You know, he saw Arya, Arya Stark uh, be taken by, uh, not taken, but pretty much, uh, yeah, but kind of taken by uh, Tywin Lannister. He doesn't know it's Arya Stark, but he kind of takes her uh, under his wing, you know, makes her kind of like, his, not his servant, but, you know, she kind of, like, cooks and cleans and, you know, does stuff for him, so kind of his servant, but he takes a fond uh, liking of her. 
not knowing she's Arya Stark. Um, you saw Rob Stark, you know, he was promised to marry one of the Frey's daughter because he aligns himself with Walter Frey to cross over his bridge. So in order to do so, he had a, you know, part of the deal was Rob Stark would marry a Fre one of Walter Frey's daughters. So that way pretty much, you know, Walter Frey is aligned with a king and that's what he wanted. And Rob Stark agreed to it. He didn't want to do it. Uh, you saw Catelyn Stark free Jamie Lannister. You know, she made a deal with him and she ended up freeing him. So Bran of Tar uh, ended up taking Jamie Lannister back to King's Landing or trying to. But they were captured in the process. Uh, Rob Stark, you know, finally realizes what happened, you know, what his mother did. So he ends up arresting his mother, you know, for freeing Jamie Lannister. And ends up falling in love with Talisa, you know, the woman he met on the battlefield. Um, Arya, Arya, you know, Arya Stark escapes uh, Heron Hall, which, you know, where she was serving Tywin Lannister at. Um, Daenerys gets a dragon's back and, you know, pretty much fucks uh, Karth over. Uh, not over, but, like, she pretty much just fucks shits up there. And then, of course, they had the big battle of Blackwater towards the end of the season, episode uh, 9 to be exact. It's the big battle where Stannis pretty much invades King's Landing. Uh, Stannis pretty much was about to win. You know, Stannis was about to take over the throne pretty much and defeating Joffrey uh, Baratheon for the throne. But before Stannis was able to win, uh, Tywin Lannister marches um, on King's Landing, pretty much uh, eliminating all of Stannis' army. So Stannis loses at the very end, even though he's about to win and become the... Uh, the king of uh, the, the Seven Kingdoms, the kings of, you know, and whatnot. So Stannis pretty much got screwed over at the end and pretty much almost won the Battle of Blackwater before Tywin came in at the end to make the save for Joffrey. And then in the last episode, he pretty much had the aftermath of the Blackwater battle. You know, uh, Ty uh, Tyrion had a huge scar on his face, so he was recovering from that. Uh, Rob ended up, you know, marrying Talisa, even though he was promised to Walter one of Walter Frey's daughters, ended up marrying Lady Talisa instead. Theon was betrayed by his own men after taking over Winterfell. Uh, he was betrayed by them. And then uh, Jon Snow uh, pretty much had to prove he was joining the Wildlings because, you know, when he had Ingrid, uh, she led him to the Wildling camp. The Wildlings took him uh, in and, you know, and you know for not killing him, they pretty much, he had to prove he, was, he wanted to be a Wildling as well. So Jon had to prove that he was a Wildling now. And, you know, at the end of the season, you had the army of the dead walking towards the Castle Black and pretty much, you know, walking towards, um, you know, screwing shit up. So... Um, yeah, that was it for season two. Like I said, season two had a lot going on. You had a lot of events. You had a lot of things, a lot of progressions, a lot of characters rising to the occasion. Uh, just a lot going on this season. And I really enjoyed season two. And I thought it was a really good season. Uh, definitely, like I said, progressing off of what happened in season one. I thought you had a lot um, happening. So season two gets two thumbs up. This is probably right now my second favorite season of the series um, that's happened. So definitely... Uh, season 2 was a great season. I definitely liked it a lot. But yeah, that, that'll do it for the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Tomorrow will be Season 3, so stay tuned for that video. But yeah, thank you guys for watching the video once again. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.